All right, guys. If you can't tell, I'm doing all of these just back to back. Building, uploading, building, uploading, giving a couple minutes in between just so that I can, you know, clean up a little and do the little stuff. Now, we're going to get our regulator panels set up. You know what? We're going to have to Let me give it a little more light. I'm going to actually have a light directly overhead. Let's see if that will work. Really wasn't worried too much about lighting in these. Just uh, just enough to get, you know, so you guys can see what's going on. So, yep, yeah, regulator panel that we already showed you. These lines go up. One of the nice things about these kind of setups is you can do a lot of the work beforehand where you're not there struggling on site trying to get it done unless you know you, this is your company or whatever if you're doing it for someone else you can do a lot of this beforehand in your uh your garage shop or whatever just go to text so Remove the little zip tie thingy that holds it in place. On these jumper lines that came with it, it also comes with two beer nut, ga or beer nut gaskets, which is perfect. So you're going to set one aside, stick this out. I'm going to put this in there, and like I said, when I had this built, I made sure that they were built with all stainless components. So, I mean, I can go through and make all of this, but the amount of time that it saves is, doesn't make it worth it for the little bit extra, especially since you know, I already wanted the panel pre-made, so adding this kind of, the hoses into it isn't that much more. Just like the tail tail pieces is just another tail piece. Tail piece, beer nut gasket, beer nut. And these we're gonna fully tighten because we have no. Uh, it's not likely that we're going to remove these. set with me for uh, revealing the magic behind a draft system. It's weird how tight-lipped people are about certain things. Like, there's nothing to this. All the information is out there. Get it. Order a book. Order the... The Brewers Association 4th Edition Draft System Manual. All of it's in there. This is really easy stuff. Alright, now we got it on there. We go through with our handy dandy little wrench. We're gonna tighten it. Now because that gasket's in there, you don't need to, you know, key man it down. You just need to get it tight. Again, when I go in to install this, I'm going to do the installation, and then they're going to bring in beer at a, at a different date. Then I'll go back in and I'll hook up all of the line, all the lines to the kegs, and I'll run run stuff through there. That way I can tweak it, make sure there's no leaks or anything like that, and make sure that the gas flow is working correctly, and make sure that we get everything exactly where it needs to be. Because beer is kind of a fickle creature. Now, in an earlier video, I said that the mo most common is 12 PSI because most common beers have 2.5 volumes of CO2 in it, and 12 PSI is what keeps those happy, but not all. 
So, if you've got a beer that is running three volumes of CO2, then you're looking at a much higher CO2 level and you might have to tweak it. Now this system isn't going to be really designed for that. For something like that, you need to build in points of restriction where you can increase or decrease the restriction. Uh, we'll get more into that. This, literally, tailpiece, beer nut, put the beer nut gasket in there, tighten it on to the coupler, take the faucet wrench, go the right direction, <laughs> and tighten down the beer nut. But, unfortunately, what I just remembered is I left my clamp kit out of the vehicle. So, uh, I'll show you what to do on these, but it'll have to be another... I'll have to turn you off and upload you before I can put on the clamps. Whatever. Where was I? Oh yeah, volumes of CO2. So, they make things like flow control faucets. Um... The Perlix are my preferred, but there's multiple other different types of flow control faucets. And you can control, you can add, or, well, if your system has 12 pounds of uh, restriction built into it, you can't drop below 12 pounds. But you can add restriction to it with a flow control faucet. So you can take it up to like 18 pounds of restriction. And that would allow you to run 18 pounds of pressure on whatever beer it is that you're running. So if that, we'll say that this number is off the top of my head, probably not quite. These are, you know, ballpark numbers. So you've got a beer that's running 2.7, 2.8 volumes of CO2. So a higher, more carbonation to it. And you want to keep your beer carbonated, so you need to run... 18 psi of CO2 to keep your beer carbonated to the level that it wants. Well, if you're running 18 psi to push it and you've got 12 pounds of restriction, when you open that tap, it's going to fly out. So you use a flow control faucet to slow down the flow of the beer to create more restriction to keep the beer flowing at the rate that it wants to and keep the pressure correct. In theory. They work pretty well, to be honest with you. There are other things that you can do. There is a inline, which I don't have one here, I don't think I... Well, I might, somewhere. There's an inline restrictor that you can put in. Not certain if I've got one here, I'd have to look, but I'll show you in a later video. That uh is basically a behind the behind the scenes one. The downside to all of this is it costs more. It gives you more versatility, but it costs more. So that faucet that I put on there, uh, it's a $25 faucet or whatever. I don't remember to be to be honest with you. 25, 28, something like that. A uh, flow control faucet, like a pearl of flow controls. I think they're like 65 a piece. So I mean, you could damn near uh, you can buy three for the cost of one, or you know, something like that. Whatever. So yeah, costs a lot more. A little inline. The inline restrictor, I don't remember how much it was, but I'm, I'd be surprised if it was under 50. But it gives you more versatility. And that's a thing. So a lot of modern beers, brewers are playing. They're doing a lot of different stuff. So, you could get a beer that's undercarbonated. It has, you know, a volume and a half. 1.5 volumes of CO2 in it, which means you need to be running that at like, I don't know, 7 PSI? 
Now, if you've got 12 pounds of resistance built into your draft system and you need to run 7 PSI, it ain't going to flow very well. And it's going to cause a lot of foaming issues. So, I've been experimenting and playing around, not with, like, this kind of system for a customer. I've been playing around with some of my systems, building in less restriction into the system. So I'll build in 10 PSI of resistance, or, you know, I'll build in 10 PSI of resistance in the system and using a flow control faucet to add that extra two pounds to maintain the proper CO2 or proper restriction on that line or so that allows me to run a lower carbonated beer if for some reason we get one or we make one whatever um, or with the flow control faucet I can bump it up and I can run still the higher carbonated beers off of them. Some of the beers that I deal with are you know damn near champagne level carbonation so they need high restrictions. I'm getting kind of a, getting up into the higher theory of, uh, of draft system stuff, so <laughs> I'm sure some of this won't make any sense, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, I've thought about this a lot, so. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. Um, so from here, I wish I had my clamps in here, but uh, they're out in the car, I'll have to go get them. You take it, cut the little zip tie off of uh, this, you know what? I'm just going to go get it, uh, upload this, and then I'll be uh, starting another one where we finish this one. Sorry about that.